with the release of Christopher Nolan's new film, Tenant, it's time to rank all 11 of his films on a tier list. So, let's get right into it. We return, and now, um, this tier list, um, will be very interesting. I'd like to hear, uh, your score down below for all these films. So, um, yeah, let's get right into it. Um, starting this off with our first one, we have Dunkirk. Now, Dunkirk is a good film, in my opinion. Um, I think it's not one of my favorite, well, it's, yeah, you know, I haven't seen very many war films, but, uh, Dunkirk is a very good war film that they didn't make rated R, which is interesting. No one doesn't make very much rated R movies ever since, um, probably, like, Batman Begins. <laughs> so, Dunkirk, uh, was a non-rated R war movie, which was interesting, but I feel like um, Nolan hit the story point and really, um, uh, made a strike with that one. Now, um, it's either that you like Dunkirk, or, <laughs> Dunkirk, uh, it's either that you like Dunkirk or you feel like it's incredible, absolutely incredible. I'm one of the people that think it's good, and that's why it's gonna go in the good tier, because it's a good film. Moving on to our next one, we have... Inception. Now, this one was my favorite Nolan film, and then realizing it, I liked the, um, these other two more. I enjoyed them more. Um, I think this one is probably his most brilliant film that he's created, because it just messes with your mind so much, and really, really incredible. Um, great cast. Uh, DiCaprio, he's great. Um... Joseph Gordon Levi, 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 something like that, and of course, Ellen Page. Come on now, can't forget Ellen. Um, actually, I forgot Tom Hardy and Michael Caine. They're also in the movie. <laughs> yeah, I really like Inception, and that's why I'm gonna put it in the masterpiece selection. I just feel like this film is mind bending, trickery. I didn't think I would like it going in. I didn't think it was uh, that well received, but then I learned the fan base for it, and everyone loves Inception. Moving on to our next one, we have The Prestige. Now, The Prestige is an alright film, in my opinion. That's why I have the alright here. <laughs> uh, this film is um, another mind-bender movie. It's just that the characters are so unlikable. I know, Hugh Jackman, Christian Bale, like unlikable characters, uh, um, not actors, uh, but characters, their characters are just so unlikable, and, um, that's what I have with the following, but these guys are even more likable than the following characters, um, yeah, the prestige is definitely, um, great with its story and everything, originality, definitely, it's just that uh, entertainment-wise, you're always, like, booing for both them, so it's like, oh, you, you get this big twist, well, I didn't really care, so, yeah, The Prestige will go in the alright here, because it's an alright movie, um, so there's some people that put it in the masterpiece tier, I'm not one of them, so, moving on to our next one, we have The Dark Knight Rises, yes, now, this film, when I first watched it, I thought it was the best, uh, Nolan film, and the best, no, I thought Inception was, and the, well, the best Batman film. I was definitely wrong with that. Um, no, I thought Batman Begins was the best. Maybe I thought this one was. This one is probably the most enjoyable for me. I just, <laughs> I really enjoy The Dark Knight Rises, but this is just an epic finale to the Dark Knight trilogy, and um, it's just 
spectacular. I mean, Nolan really knows how to make Batman films. I would say that. Let's see about Reeves. Um, Batman, man, 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 man. Batman films. All right, so uh, The Dark Knight Rises will go in... I want to put it in amazing, but I want to... I'm going to put it in the great tier just because it's a bit weird. Like, you know, Catwoman and everything, you know. I'm not a big fan of Catwoman and like the actor. I um, forgot her name, but good actor. Um, just didn't see the chemistry between Bale and her. Um, together as, like, Batman and Catwoman. Yeah, it was weird. Uh, moving on to Insomnia. I don't know if I pronounced that right, but I'm sorry. <laughs> Insomnia is, um, I just watched this recently, like, a week ago. Um, I thought it was a good film. Um, no twist. You know, it felt like Nolan... You know, it didn't feel like a Nolan film to me. It felt like he directed it, but it didn't feel like he created it all the way. So it's just not like one of his big blockbuster films or big mind bender. It's just a film that I think is good, but just um, kind of there in his 11 movies. Moving on to the one and the only Dark Knight. Now this film is incredible absolutely amazing first time i actually watched it i didn't like it i didn't understand why everyone liked it so much and then i watched it again for the second time and then i saw it in theaters and i was like damn this film is absolutely incredible heath ledger is insane as the joker see madness as you know is like gravity all it takes is a little push. Christian Bale, of course, great as Batman, but it's hard to say, but Heath steals the show. <laughs> All right, but this one will go in the masterpiece here. This is a masterpiece of a film. Next up, we have The Following. Now, this film is the worst Nolan film, and I don't like this film at all. The characters are not likable at all. It's hard to follow it, even though it's called The Following. Yeah, it's just hard to follow along with the movie because it's just so weird and so awkward. And I just am not a fan of this film. It's going in the bad tier for me. I do not like this film. But it was Nolan's first film, and I mean, if we all start somewhere, right? But Taika Waititi had a good film. Um, Eagle vs. Shark, when he started, that was a good film. Um, moving on to um, Memento. Memento is such a mind-bender of a film. I really, really like Memento. It's just so interesting, so weird, so odd. Um, his second film, and Guy Pierce is great in this film. Uh, Joe, I forgot his last name, but he was in the Bad Boys trilogy. Fuck me! Fuck! 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 He's great. It's just such an odd film, and, you know, you need to watch it a second time to actually understand some more of it. I mean, not all of it, but some more of it. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna put it in the amazing tier. I already did that without even looking. I just feel like this is an amazing film. No denying that. <laughs> okay, moving on to the next film, Interstellar. Now, Interstellar is just spectacular. This is my favorite Nolan film. I, I know other people would say different, say, what? They would put it in, like, the good tier or the great tier, but I would put it in the masterpiece tier at the front because I feel like the music, the score is absolutely incredible. The uh, characters are likable, which he has a problem with sometimes, usually not though. Um, it had like so much heart and so much energy inside this film. I mean, Matthew McConaughey is absolutely incredible in this film. Uh, Michael Caine is in it for some, and he is excellent, of course. Michael Caine, my man. Um, and who else is in this film? Uh, there's uh, the Catwoman girl. Yeah, she's in the film. Yeah, but uh, I, why can't I think of anyone? Hmm. The 
Grandpa from Daddy's Home to Good God. Okay, <laughs> and yeah, Interstellar is just a masterpiece of a film, and I really like it. Um, moving on to our next film, Batman Begins. Now, at first, I think, as you heard before, I actually liked this film the most from Christopher Nolan. Now it's uh, pushed down a little bit, but I still truly love this film. And I am going to put it in the great tier because I think this is a great origin story for Batman. Um, I wasn't a big Batman fan until I saw that film. That film really tipped um, Batman up for me because I didn't like the Lego Batman movie. I didn't like Batman 1989 or the one with the penguin. But yeah, this film really striked. I mean, well, Batman Forever sucked. All right, moving on. Uh, we are going uh, into the last film, Tenet. Now, Tenet is an odd film, but this was my first Nolan film I saw in theaters. And actually, no, that's not true. I saw The Dark Knight and Interstellar. But I, I, I've seen them at home before. <laughs> but yeah, Tenet was the first one that was actually released that I saw um, in theaters. And it was, at the start, like, the first two acts, like I've said in my movie review about it, you can go check that out. Um, yeah, I worked on the thumbnail a lot for that one. Uh, yeah, Tenant is, um, the first two acts, I had a smile on my face the whole entire movie. And then you hit the third act. And it drags on for so bloody long I just wanted to make it stop, and you know, at the end, it had quite an interesting twist to it. Um, really like that, but um, God, it just was so confusing. Like, not saying that the whole movie wasn't confusing or anything. This third act, though, was the weirdest thing I've seen, and just dragged on for way too long than it should have. Um, but you know what? I think Tenet is a great film, and it gets to go in the great tier to me, right? Um, so let's put them in order now. Uh, which one do I, uh, yeah, I think, uh, the good tier is good. Uh, which one do I like? I think I'm gonna put Tenet above Batman Begins. Uh, Memento, and so yeah, they're all perfect right now. Hmm. look at that. All right, so um, give me uh, your favorite Christopher Nolan film down below, and um, try switch it up. Don't just say The Dark Knight for every single time, or, yeah. So, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. I'll catch you in the next video.